Hi everybody, this is a Flat Cap Cafe Racer, and today I think it's something special. I'm got. Uh, I'm going to go with my Thruxton R. I've owned it for six, a little over six and a half years, and I've got about 10,000 miles on it. So I thought I'd go over that with you here today. And you're going, how could you only have 10,000 miles on it in six and a half years? Well, I've had nine other motorcycles in here going through here at the same time, so I've been riding them all, all of them a little bit during the year, so uh, I've ridden it quite a, quite a bit actually, and what's really remarkable, and I think you'll find interesting, is I'm going to go over, I've run it down the drag strip 55 times. and I've run it out of Bonneville, high speed, to top speed, 19 different times. And I'm going to kind of go over all the maintenance that I've done to the bike and all the accessories and more importantly all the cost and I think you're going to be surprised I was at how much all this really cost when I was doing it so now I realize a lot of the costs associated with what I was doing had to do with the land speed racing and drag racing had nothing to do with just the standard bike so but stay tuned, I think you'll find this interesting. These are my brand new Road 6s that are going to be on, and they'll be included in the uh, prices and pricing that I'm doing and going to show you here today. Uh, I've had Road 6s on my BMW R9T and my 2000. And 21 Tiger and really like the Road 6s. Holy cow, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that I've, I'm on the uh, fourth set of tires here with these Road 6s. But the first set of tires, uh, I like I said, I do land speed racing. So the first set I took off at 2,900 miles and put them on my Thunderbird Sport. Uh, the second ones I put on to go out to Bonneville on the K3s and K2s. And they've only got a couple thousand miles on them. And I'm going to keep those tires and save them for some other uses. So the, the Michelin Road 6s should be stay on for probably 10,000 miles. But it's kind of exaggerated. And it's, you're going to see that in the cost because some of the stuff you wouldn't normally have to do. Of course, one of the biggest expenses you're going to see here, you notice that this 
this bike is not the stock color stock color silver ice uh, painted a candy apple red of course you didn't have to do that and that's one of the, the really big expenses we got the uh, parts I got the parts back from the painter in February of 2022 and I just thought it freshened up the bike and I I liked it a lot I just I like the silver it was fine and it looks great too but that just was ready for a change okay going on to some of the accessories here we have the uh, triumph quarter fairing and the terramint chin or belly pan if you will and I got the belly pan without the screen holes because I'm running at Bonneville so I didn't want that and I put a little clear coating on it to keep it from chipping that was uh, $1,630. One of the performance things that most of you would like to know about is the uh, put a cam in the bike, a tech back uh, 303 cam in the bike, uh, pay for the installation. Then I had, after I did the break in on it, I had the valves rechecked because I'm going to Bonneville. I'm going to make sure it's right. The last thing was the uh, ECU and I got that for DNK tune and all total that was fourteen hundred and eighty dollars Now as far as silencers the Top one here is the stock silencer that that came with the uh, Thruxton R actually it's never been on the bike What was on the bike was this Vance and Hines system? you can see it's quite a bit shorter than the you can see it's quite a bit shorter than the stock exhaust next I went uh, for the for the racing for the land speed racing I went to this meerkat system right here so this is my third exhaust and it's even longer than the the original just by a little bit and my fourth and final exhaust let me show you getting off the um, bag so you can see this this again is a meerkat but it's the uh, I call it the flat cat cafe racer special but it's the Norton style then it this is the fourth one I have on here and it is actually longer than any of the other exhaust and it has a nice sound and I, I really like the way it looks not quite as loud as the other mirror cap Of course, all the cams and the ECU tunes and the, all the exhaust kind of led up to the, for the purpose of doing a little bit better on a drag strip. And also uh, going in and doing a little bit better at Bonneville. Okay, the, on the first uh, stock runs, the bike was, generally speaking, it was running at about 85 horsepower. And uh, I think maybe 74.5 pounds of torque. Once we changed the cam, the DNK tune, the Meerkat exhaust and X-pipes, we were running at almost 102 horsepower so it was at least 15 horsepower gain over that and the torque improved to from 74 to 85 so that's a pretty huge jump well worth it I think
One of the things I have to replace here is this uh, Showa fort cap here uh, that I buggered up uh, trying to adjust it one day. So I will be replacing that. This will also be in the, the cost of the ownership of the bike. Now normal wear items that uh, have not met, been previously mentioned. And um, I have a, the racing battery in there because... Uh, you know, that was the lithium battery I used. So I needed that one too. So that's not really a normal wear item, but I'm throwing it in here. Hang in there. We're getting really close to the end. Accessories and other farkles. Uh, that's a big one. And mostly is the seat. I did have to change the color of the seat once I changed the color of the bike. The panniers and mounts I find in the... Uh, you just got to have those. Same thing with heated hand grips. Tank bag I use occasionally. The fender extender is really ne necessity without to keep the crap from getting all over your motor. Passenger pegs I use all the time. An Achille lanyard something I had to use for racing. I save the best maintenance items for last and that's the oil change and filters. I've had eight during this period of 6.6 .6 years and 10,000 miles. Well, whatever you think about what I've done with this Thruxton and how I've used it, you have to at least admit that uh, I did explore some of the, the boundaries with it in terms of performance and, and farkles, if you will. Uh, I didn't put all the farkles that, you know, I bought, like little pieces like this, you know, I didn't, I didn't count that or that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the, the detailed look at the ownership of this bike. Um, I have to say that really the only thing that ever, ever truly broke on the bike was what I showed you on the, uh, when I put the fairing on and uh, the wiring was kind of short going into the ignition switch. And uh, that was maybe an installation problem with the Triumph shop that I got it at. They didn't install it correctly and a little bit of the design of the thing itself. But uh, other than that, all the drag racing and all the land speed racing and all my rides, the bike's been beautiful and I really enjoy riding it. And uh, I cap it and I did change the color on it. And uh, so it gets, it's given it another five or six more years. Thanks for watching. This is the Flat Cat Cafe Racer. Join me and my friends at Flat Cap Cafe Racer for riding and racing. Please subscribe.